Mayo Clinic of Jacksonville and is going to be presented by Dr. Stoffer. Good afternoon. I'm uh, John Stoffer, a fourth year uh, resident from Mayo Clinic Jacksonville. And I'd like to thank the association as well as the moderators for giving us uh, the chance to present our data, which is the results and patient outcomes of uh, total pancreatectomy at our institution over a six-year time period. Uh, total pancreatectomy was first performed by Dr. Priestley, uh, which is the first uh, successful total pancreatectomy, of course, which depended on the development of injectable in insulin. And it has been a considered an option in a variety of uh, underlying uh, pancreatic disease states. Uh, there was early initial enthusiasm for total pancreatectomy uh, over partial resection <coughs> due to several factors, um, which included uh, the morbidity of the pancreatic fistula, as well as the worry about multicentricity of pancreatic cancer, and uh, the theoretical improved lymphadenectomy. Uh, however, over the next two decades, uh, these were not borne out uh, in long-term data. However, there are significant consequences of total pancreatectomy, as we all know. Uh, we've taken care of patients with, uh, uh, after total pancreatectomy, we know there's significant endocrine and exocrine insufficiencies, as well as uh, a quality of life issue, and these have all been well described in literature. However, there are, seem to be increasing indications for total pancreatectomy. Uh, there's recent SEER database um, uh, data which show that total pancreatectomy seems to be on the increase as far as its frequency and use, uh, and it's likely multifactorial. Um, some of which is listed as, uh, you know, since the first description of IPMN in 1982, we're seeing more and more of these patients, as well as the recognition of genetic predisposition in these patients. And uh, we may have improved our endocrine control uh, through new insulin formulations, insulin delivery systems, as well as uh, improved exo exocrine uh, supplementation. So we performed a standard uh, retrospective, retrospective database review over a six-year time period and did a uh, standard uh, statistical analysis. And what we found over the six-year time period was 397 pancreatic resections, and we focused on the 47 total pancreatectomies, uh, which comprised 12% uh, of our uh, pancreatic resections. Uh, we did not have complete data on the proximal and distal uh, resections, unfortunately, uh, so we cannot compare these uh, directly. However, we can compare them to uh, historical controls. We actually have performed six total pancreatectomies since this analysis. Uh, we don't have one-year data, so they are not added into this analysis, but will be in the future. The patient characteristics are as shown, and uh, they are the usual characteristics of those undergoing uh, pancreas cancer surgery, or pancreatic resection at least. Uh, as we see, the median age is 70, uh, and there was a, a lot of uh, comorbidities in these patients. Uh, four of these were insulin-dependent before surgery. Preoperative symptoms are as given. Uh, there was uh, almost a 50% um, uh, weight loss was seen, and the median was 9 kilograms. Uh, most of these were in the pancreatic cancer group. Uh, and I'd like to point uh, you to the uh, right side where uh, we see that three patients had undergone previous pancreatic resections, which were partial pancreatic resections, and making these elective uh, completion total pancreatectomies. The uh, indications for total pancreatectomy are as given. Uh, about half were for malignant indications and half were for non-malignant uh, indications. Our two biggest patient subgroups were those with pancreatic cancer, uh, split into those felt to be arising de novo versus those felt to be arising from underlying IPMN. Uh, there was uh, a difference between those two groups as far as the patients arising de novo were uh, more locally advanced tumors, and we'll see the results of that in a few slides. Uh, those with non-malignant disease generally had uh, non-invasive IPMN. So the first patient subgroup is those with pancreatic cancer, uh, and we see the tumor grade and tumor stage, as well as a high uh, positive lymph node rate, positive lymphatic evasion, and a 30% positive margin rate. The reason for total pancreatectomy uh, on these patients is given uh, diffuse involvement with planned total pancreatectomy was nearly 50%, while those with uh, continuously positive margins were a, a basically the rest of the patients with one familial syndrome and one completion total pancreatectomy in this group. Those with non-invasive IPMN are uh, given here. 
split into their WHO, who uh, classification and their reason for total pancreatectomy. Generally, these patients had uh, diffuse involvement with planned total pancreatectomy, at least more often than those with the pancreatic cancer. Uh, the duration of disease is uh, given. Uh, some of these patients were uh, surveilled for a while until they demonstrated radiographic or clinical changes, prompting uh, surgery. The operative data is given is comparable to uh, uh, historical controls. Uh, portal vein resection um, was performed in 20% of these patients, again indicating that um, some of these had uh, locally advanced tumors. Patient outcomes are given. Uh, median length of stay is 11 days. Medium I ICU stay is one day, and this compares very favorable to, uh, to previous uh, historical controls. Generally, these patients were maintained on an insulin drip and were transitioned to long-acting insulin uh, at discharge. And uh, eight of these patients required uh, parenteral nutrition. The mortality and morbidity is shown. We did have one mortality in an elderly uh, deconditioned female undergoing total pancreatectomy for locally advanced um, pancreatic uh, adenocarcinoma with a vein resection and reconstruction. She was discharged after nine days, uh, but presented to an outside facility eight days later uh, with dehydration, malnutrition, DKA, and died. Uh, the morbidity rate overall was 47%. However, when uh, uh, you, you graded it uh, based on the complications, three, four, and five, considered as major complications, it was uh, about 20%. And you can see we split it into the medical and surgical complications. The reoperation rate was 9% with four patients undergoing reoperation. Uh, all of these reoperations um, were for abdominal abscess with GI fistula found. 